to it. Got it. Thank you.
smiling faces out there that I haven't seen since before Easter. I have missed you. And a few mask faces that I can tell who you are because Rock didn't wear a cap so I can see from here who that is. I've been saving up, Rock. I have really missed teasing you. I have missed it so much. I want to thank Lenny and we're going to have a prelude here by our uh, organist and piano player, but we're kind of Doing a sound check at the moment, too, so uh, bear with us. Okay, let's see how you can hear them. Wait a minute. We're not Sorry. ready yet. No, Somebody wait. turn mine off. Okay, you're on. Voice. It's on now. Wait a minute. Oh, you just turned it off. Okay, move your it hand. Back on. No, you turned it off. Turn it on. Now stop. Now hit voice. And then 13. What's there? There you go. Okay, let's go. You can hear us on the FM? No. No? Okay. Then we're going to move this. That'll be all right. I'm glad you let us know. That's what we're doing right now. Can you hear me on the FM now? I can't hardly hear me. You gotta turn me up. You, you gotta you gotta turn me up, man. 
I can't hear them. There, there. Now, can you hear me on the FM? Can you hear me on the FM? One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Okay, before we go any farther, if you can hear me on the FM, tap your horn. Can you not hear me on the FM? Okay, then, then this is not working somehow. Um, it is, though. I mean, that the connection is good. We've got them turned up as far as we can, I think. Why can they not hear me? Man, I've got mine maxed. And you got me maxed on yours? Can you turn me up? This won't affect any FM. It should. Yeah. Oh, it will, will though, because the FM is coming right out of there. So if you can't hear me on this mic, they can't hear you. Does that have game there? Gain? I might be able to turn gain is what makes it louder. I've got it cranked. Okay, can you hear me on the FM? If you can, toot your horn. I don't know. I have no idea why that's not working. It should be working. How's the signal getting from there? This radio? Yeah. One for each? I don't know. If you're in the car, make sure you're, you're tuned to 90.1, 90.1 on FM. If you can't hear me on the radio, I guess roll down your windows. <laughs> okay, good morning. Welcome to Church on the Green. Um, you're all spread out. I don't have to tell you to stay socially distance, distance. That's that's a misnomer, right? Um, be antisocial, but stay apart. It's a beautiful day, and now the breeze is going to come up and affect the microphone a little and probably blow out the candle. But that's okay. We'll take that over 90 degrees, won't we? Okay, bring the light of Christ into this place. May this be a place of worship. Why would that not be going to FM? It's on, it's cranked, it's right in front of the speaker. Because I can hear myself. So that should be working, but it's not. I don't know. Anyway, um, if you have a bulletin or if you have a smartphone and you have downloaded it, I um, want to thank all the musicians who shared their talents with us today. Trey and Vince, and he also shared his speakers and a lot of chords and what have you. And Donna and Liz, and they've been bailing me out through this whole pandemic, and I so appreciate them. A couple of quick announcements. Tuesday, the Humboldt's trustees meet at 7 and the ad board at 7.30. Uh, Wednesday, we have Bible study at both churches. 8 o'clock at Humboldt, and 9.30 at Table Rock. We have a lot of birthdays. Uh, Linda King has a birthday tomorrow. Uh, today would have been Kathy Lenke's mom's 100th birthday. So happy birthday in heaven to her. Uh, uh, September 1st is uh, Glenda Blake's birthday and Dave and Barb Harris's anniversary. Don Bloss, Katie Dietz, Brian and Lori, well, Brian and Lori Siebel have an anniversary, and Don and Katie have birthdays on the 2nd. On the 4th, Patrick Pineda has a birthday. And September 5th, Rock and Tina Herr have an anniversary, and we pray for you, Tina. 
<laughs> that's two. That's two, Rock. I've been saving up for months, see? That's what happens when you leave me to myself and I get to think and think. Anyway, we are so happy to have you here and we're going to sing. Let's sing Birthday First. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God's richest blessing on you, not just on your day of celebration, but every day of the year. Amen. Okay, we've got a few bulletins left. If anybody doesn't have a bulletin, you can raise your hand or you can honk your horn and we will try to get a bulletin to you. We also have more kids packets. If there's anybody that doesn't have a kids packet, make sure and you let our ushers know. We're going to start with our gathering song, which is Morning Has Broken. Okay, please join me in the call to worship. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. In the heavens, he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from the wedding canopy. Like a strong man, man is forced with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens. And its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its ways. Okay, our next gem is This is My Father's World. Maker 
Father's praise. This is my Father's world. He shines in all that's there. I hear him pass, speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. Thank you. I appreciate you all singing because um, it's kind of lonesome up here. Here's the thing. All of these Methodists are really loving this because everybody can have a back row. You know, during this pandemic, whoever gets to church first has to sit at the front. They get ushered to the front pew, and the only joy of this whole troubling time is that I have had people on the front pew in both churches every week. But now we're out in the wide open space, and, and we can spread out a little, and we're glad for that, too. Now, if you will join me, try to balance this with one hand. It's not so easy. Um, if you will join me in the opening prayer. You are the God who creates and recreates, who judges and delivers, who calls by name and makes new. This much we gladly confess in praise and thanksgiving. This much we trust and affirm, only to ponder the chance that we are too glib, that we say more than we mean, that we say more than we can in order to confessions in a world filled with those who cynically acknowledge none but themselves. We are their fellow travelers with those who in vulnerability have no chance but prayer to you. And we stand in solidarity with them. Thus we ask, beyond our critical reservations, that you be your powerful, active, sovereign self. Give us eyes to see your wonders around us. Give us hearts to live into your risky miracles. Give us tongues to praise you beyond our doubt. For it is to you, only you, that we turn on behalf of the world that waits in its deathliness for you act of life. Amen. The first scripture lesson is um, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As father, as a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him, for he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like the flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O oh, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, 
all his host, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. We're going to do the first three verses now of Fairest Lord Jesus. leaned on my next door neighbor here to do some special music this morning. I've been missing choir. I've been missing special music. And so he is going to play a couple songs for us. And if you know the songs, you're more than welcome to jump in on the chorus. They're very familiar.
Williams Sr., 1948, antique song. That's okay, because most of the people sitting here watching are Whoa. antiques too. <laughs> right on. You only got to be 50. Yeah, I heard from AARP. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been missing object lessons. We have some kids here. I'm not allowed to have them come up. So I filled a little packet so that everybody has some coloring pages and eight crayons and some candy that's a rainbow color and it's very sour. I had some for breakfast. <laughs> sour patch rainbow belt, I think it's called. Anyway. So we're in a place here that is absolutely spectacular, and I want to give a shout out to all the women and men who work hard to keep this garden so beautiful, because it is a lot of work. Yes. Already this morning early when I was setting up, there were people here watering all these flowers and weeding, and Jim and Jan were turning off the music so that I wouldn't, wouldn't cover up Vance and the organists, and um, I know there's people that come here and work every day, and it's a beautiful setting. Now, kids, you've got eight crayons. I want you to tell me how many colors you can see when you look around. How many colors did God use to paint the world? 
We can't even imagine how many variations there are just of green. Just pick green and look at how many different shades of green there are around us. My grandson tells me that he doesn't have a favorite color, and the reason is all colors are beautiful. And that doesn't just hold for God's creation of flowers and plants and trees and birds. That holds true for his creation of people, too. All colors are beautiful. I want you to always remember that, that God picked a very specific crayon when he made you. You're not like any other crayon in the box. You are unique. There are things about you that are different than anybody else in the world, and God loves you that way, just how you are. He doesn't want you to be exactly like everybody else. He doesn't want you to be exactly like anybody else but he wants you to be exactly how he created you. And that's the case for everybody around you too. Don't ever look at somebody and think, they should be more like me. No, nope. they should be just as God created them. And he keeps working on us, like a painting that's not quite finished. He keeps working on us every day to make us better people, to teach us more about love and to teach us more about him. And that's the most wonderful thing. We're almost like flowers in his garden or maybe a painting of flowers and he just keeps making it better every day. Okay, you can eat your candy. I know it's already gone, I just said that. <laughs> okay, um, the scripture lesson is from Matthew 6, 25 through 34. And I really love this scripture, and I especially think it's um, an important scripture right now where we're, we're all kind of anxious. We're anxious about school and work and church and the pandemic and the election, and we're just anxious. I love this scripture. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Oh, I'm trying to Facebook these words so that people out there can read them, but the wind's not cooperating with me. Let it focus up again. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For the Gentiles who strive for all these things, it's the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of this his holy word. As we worship in this beautiful setting, I can't help but think of the gardens that were mentioned in the Bible. And the first one, of course, the Garden of Eden, a paradise. It was perfection. There were trees producing all kinds of fruit, and there were berries and nuts and grain for all the animals and for the first humans. And best of all, no weeds. Yeah, no weeds. It wasn't until after Adam and Eve 
made poor choices and disobeyed God, that they had to leave the garden and begin to work the soil and fight the weeds. Now, those of you who have either helped groom this memorial garden or have just driven through it when the garden club was at work, realize what a job it is to maintain this beauty. If there were no weeds, it would certainly make life easier, wouldn't it? And you farmers out there, how much money do you spend on chemicals to keep the weeds down? If there were no weeds, it'd be a lot more profit, wouldn't there? Keeping weeds pulled and flowers and bushes groomed and your, your fields tilled, that's an endless job. But in the Garden of Eden, everything was perfect, just as it was. Paradise, indeed. Now, sometimes I think of another garden that's mentioned quite often in Scripture, the Garden of Gethsemane. It was a quiet garden where Jesus often went to pray and to renew his spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all together are God, and sometimes it's hard for us to understand why Jesus would need to get away from the stress of his ministry to go talk to God, since he is God. But Jesus, who was God, also took the form of man so that he could endure the same temptations that we endure, feel the same heartache that we feel, suffer the same pain that we feel, and endure the same death that we will eventually endure. And it seems to me that sometimes the stress of his humanity made Jesus feel out of balance. He needed to get away to meditate and to maintain his balance as one person of the triune God. We also need times like that. We need times when we get away from worldly cares and just spend time alone with God. We need God to help us prioritize and revitalize and to restore our balance. The garden that we're sitting in right now is for us a place of beauty and solitude where we can regroup and restore our spiritual, emotional, and mental equilibrium. Now, we know, too, that Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane on the night that he was betrayed. And on that night, he prayed in anguish, knowing what was ahead of him. He was truly divine, but he was also truly human. He knew the pain that was ahead of him, even though he also knew the ultimate victory was within his reach. Nevertheless, the pain that stood between him and that victory caused him to sweat blood. But he endured. He chose God's will over his own human health and safety. Now, sometimes we're in that place too. We know that ultimately we will be redeemed and taken into eternal life with Jesus. But the uncertainty of how our lives will transition from earth to heaven gives us anxiety. Over the years, many people have told me that they aren't afraid of death. They're afraid of dying. That's what causes them anxiety. They're uncertain. Will they go peacefully in their sleep or painfully? And that causes anxiety. And in those times, we need to go to God in prayer, just as Jesus did. We need to focus on the victory and not on the battle. There's something miraculous about a garden. A garden calms us. A garden can give us a sense of hope for the renewal that comes every spring. We know that after the resurrection, it was in a garden where Jesus first revealed himself to Mary Magdalene. Try to imagine her grief at the loss of the man that she believed to be the Messiah. Then imagine her joy as she wiped the tears from her bleary eyes and exclaimed, Rabboni, teacher. That's how I think it will be for us when we are reunited with people in heaven. I've got a lot of people up there that I miss, and I know you all do. I think it'll be like that for us. Our tears will be dried and our eyes will clearly see the face of Jesus and of our loved ones. Tears of grief will be transformed into shouts of joy. Then we will spend eternity in the last garden mentioned in the Bible. We will be in paradise. 
Oh, here comes a little bit of uh, wind. The book of the Revelations on, in the 21st and 22nd chapters describes that final garden like this. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The wall is built of jasper. I should have gotten with Gloria, because she's like a geologist, and she could have told me what all these different stones looked like, but I didn't think of it until right now. The wall is built of jasper, while the city is pure gold, clear as glass. The foundations of the wall of the city are adorned with every jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, and the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates are twelve pearls, and each of the gates is a single pearl, and the street of the city is pure gold transparent as glass. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street. On either side of the river is a tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night, no need of light or lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will, and they will reign forever and ever. You know, lately people are all doom and gloom, thinking this is the end of the world. And they're reading all the scary stuff in the Revelation. But I'm here to tell you, this is the end of the book, folks. The end of the book is beautiful and joyful with no pain and no sorrow. And the nations are healed and the Lord reigns. Our own hearts are metaphorically a garden too. God planted the seed of grace in us before we were born. Over our lifetime, God nurtures our faith. He prunes away things that hold us back from total trust in God. God upholds us through the seasons when worldly cares flood our lives and we feel like we're about to drown. And God helps us withstand seasons of drought when we feel like our enthusiasm for life has dried up. God never gives up on us. He continues to work on us in us and through us until we are exactly what he had in mind. We can get depressed trying to reach perfection. And reaching that goal is impossible work for us, but nothing is impossible for God. So let him work in the garden of your heart. Paul spoke of his faith in God's work in our lives in Philippians 1, verse 6. Paul said, I am confident of this that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Lord, let it be so. Amen and amen. We aren't in paradise yet, but we are in a beautiful garden. Let's take a moment now to meditate in silence as we bring our own personal struggles and anxiety to God. Breathe deeply. 
let the Holy Spirit come into your heart and help you find balance and renewal. Let us come into a time of silent prayer. God, we need you in our lives. We need you to prune away our doubt, to water and nurture our faith. Be with those who are ill or injured or recovering from injury or from surgery. Lay your hand of healing upon them. Be with the health care professionals during this time of pandemic grant them courage and protection be with those on the front lines the essential workers the first responders be with those who are feeling alone those who are isolated in nursing homes and care facilities and be with the staff of those places and bless them, keep them safe, and give them courage and faith. Be with each of us. Calm our anxiety. Give us courage and faith that you are with us, that you still are the gardener of the universe and of our lives. All these things and the unspoken prayer we bring to you and we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we can't have a church in the garden without singing in the garden, so that's what we're going to sing now.
tithes and offerings and some of you that drove in may have noticed that uh, there was a bucket that said table rock and a bucket that said humble and they'll they'll be also at the exit when you leave you can drop your tithes and offerings in there if you want to or you can just double up next week when we're back in church or you can mail it in or you can send it in by paypal um i was uh, reading this morning i saw a joke the pastor when he was shaking hands with people as they went out, back when we could still shake hands, right? He said to this young mother, I couldn't help but notice that baby Jimmy cried through the whole service. And she said, oh, don't worry about it. He's just teething. And the pastor said, well, I couldn't help but notice that your husband cried through the whole service too. And she said, oh, don't worry about it. He's just tithing. <laughs> So uh, we appreciate when you send in your donations and your tithes. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. join me now in the unison blessing. Almighty God, you are unspeakably generous with the blessings of beauty upon all your creation. Help us remember that as a part of that creation, we are also responsible to care for flora and fauna around us. Bless the gifts that we give today that they might be a tiny seed that you can cultivate in ways you see fit to grow your kingdom on earth. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing How Great Thou Art.
have written in the bulletin a little scripture from 1 Peter chapter 1. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but imperishable, from imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. Folks, that isn't just good news. That is great news. The word of the Lord endures forever, and so does his love for his creation. Go share that love in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last hymn, hymn of promise. your tithe or offering if you would like the usher to bring the bucket so you can just drop it in they'll do that um, otherwise they're going to be by the two entrances with the buckets as you go out and wouldn't you like to hear Lenny play a couple more songs we're going to let Lenny, Lenny play a little bit more here I didn't warn him, so he, he's a little bit uh, gut shot back here, but he is a professional. He'll do fine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 